Good morning, good morning. What's up, my good people? It's your girl, Denise Joy, coming to you live with meal prep, live cooking. Um, welcome to my channel, Home Style and Design with Denise Joy. It's way more than just designing your rooms. You know, I am an interior designer and interior designer. I help homeowners transform their spaces into a destination they truly love. And I also just love this joyful lifestyle by design philosophy, where I focus on great nourishing meals that nourish your soul, staying fit and healthy, and keeping that mindset right. Just overall wellness and healthiness. So many people have been asking me, how have I maintained my 40 pound weight loss over the past two years, 40 pounds? Yeah, I'm gonna pop my collar a little bit. Um, well, you know, good habits, making great food. I'm a multi-hyphenate eater. Some of you might also be. And the way I identify multi-hyphenate is I am vegetarian, sometimes pescatarian, vegan, and always gluten-free. I went gluten-free right around the time I started my weight loss journey. Um, my metabolism was just going crazy. You know, for a woman over 50, 50 and over, that metabolism starts to kind of freak out. So I just did a long, hard look at what the heck was going on with myself and determined that I needed to make some changes. I always knew that I was um, gluten intolerant, but it just had gotten worse and worse and worse. There's some, I have a video up about, just a short, a short actually about my journey. So anyway, today, today's business, I have an awesome menu set up for y'all. I am making um, barbecue pulled pork. Now, it's jackfruit. It's not pulled pork. I know. The people who say, why do the vegetarians and vegan always say, oh, this is a uh, chickpea tuna salad or jackfruit pulled pork. It's not pork. It's not tuna. It's just a way for us to identify basically like the flavors that we want to accomplish. So this is just the start of the jackfruit pulled pork. And I'm actually going to add something else to this that's going to give it even more texture. Um, I'm going to be making a black bean salad. You want to hang around for that. I'm also starting already marinating my salmon with my jerk marinade that I made yesterday. Uh, there's already a video up. I think I put a short up about my jack, my jerk marinade that I showed you all how to make yesterday. It's so quick and so easy to make this marinade. And I made extra because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to make, let me get the best light. Yes, I'm going to make a jerk jackfruit. So I have extra jerk marinade for that goodness right there. And I'm also going to make a vegan chocolate mousse. Yes, um, roughly this will take about two hours, mostly because I'm doing a lot of talking. If I was just making this all without being on camera with you all, it would really take me just a little bit over an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. I cook all the time, make all my own food, make ahead meals. I love to meal prep. Yes, yes, meal prep. So these are some ideas, dishes you can make for meal prep. I actually already completed my um, breakfast, which I'm going to have baked sweet potato, baked it in the oven on, I was working out, popped it in the, in the oven to, uh, Saturday morning. And last Thursday night, I took 20 minutes and I made a homemade granola. So I'm going to have that on top of my baked sweet potato, along with a banana berry smoothie. Yummy, yummy breakfast, y'all. We're not talking about just dry, bland, skinless chicken and cottage cheese with a side of pine. We're not talking about eating like that. We're talking about good stuff, good stuff, good, good, good stuff. I do believe this is one of the ways that you can show self-care love. I, you know, self-love is certainly happening. People are buzzing. I have always talked about self-care love. In fact, in my home gym that I designed, I designed a sign that says self-care love. It's a reminder to myself that I am worthy of self-care love. So let's jump in. If you've never eaten jackfruit or even heard of it, it is an Asian uh, fruit, really. And so you can buy it in a can. You want to use the one that's in brine. And you can get this at like your Asian market. Now, even regular stores, Whole Foods, any, any local regular store, nowadays will sell jackfruit. And I left some so you can see what it looks like. Kind of like a little, this is just how they cut it. It's not how it's grown like this. And so I already got it started 
here and I put the seasonings on here and I just used uh, chili powder, cumin, uh, garlic powder, a little salt, paprika. And I love my stuff spicy. So I'm always going to add some chili flakes, which I'm going to add some more in a moment. And I'm also adding fresh thyme. So this is something that you can consider and then a squeeze of lemon juice. And then the base, which I already have started over here. Let me grab the pan. Isn't this a huge cast iron skillet, y'all? I love it. I love to cook in cast iron. So anyway, I have my uh, green bell peppers already cut up in here. So I'm just going to add the other. I love to have um, red onion. You could use white. So put this in here. And then this is some chopped up orange, yellow, and red pepper. Boom. Gonna add that in there. And then we're gonna just put this on the stove to let this baby cook down. And then we're gonna add our jackfruit with all the seasonings on it. All right, let me put this on low. I'm also gonna add uh, some chopped up minced garlic, which I already got started. I'm gonna have about four or five cloves of garlic that I'm gonna put in there. Garlic is so yummy, it's a funny story. I also love to make uh, home remedies, you know, for illness and things like that. And uh, a couple months ago, my son, uh, who, he doesn't live with me, but he was home. Well, he's temporarily living with me. He, anyway, it's a long story. He just moved from LA, transferring. He's a creative director and he's in Paris now. But anyway, he was feeling ill and he was saying, Mom, can you make me one of your, uh, one of your drinks? And I usually have ginger and garlic all the time. Well, that day I had no ginger and no garlic. And he looked at me like I had lost my whole mind. He said, how you, how you don't have no ginger, no garlic? and some oranges and honey so anyway i do make a practice of trying to keep ginger garlic honey uh that kind of stuff on hand because it's just you know historically known over time to have healing properties so just mince up some garlic it can be a, a rough mince you don't have to fine chop it up it's cool it's cool so we're going to just put this in the bowl with our already started jackfruit and you just you're going to roughly chop your jackfruit to add it to the bowl. I left this out so you can see how to just really rough chop it. You're not trying to cut it up. And the jackfruit kind of starts to pull apart. And it has this kind of a stringy kind of texture to it. Uh, so people like to make all kinds of stuff out of this because it can mimic texture. It's not that I don't think, I'm going to speak for myself, I'm not trying to make it be like meat, but it can mimic that mimic that texture. Uh, a whole lime, squeeze some lime juice in here as well. Boom, tick. Take your um, thyme. Thyme comes fresh, right? You're just going to hold it at the top, and then you're going to pull down to get the leaves to come off. Yes, all that yummy goodness and yummy, yummy. I love fresh herbs, and I actually usually have a garden. Well, not usually, but in the summer months, I'm on the East Coast, so it's cold, cold right now. And I don't have a, a, a cold frame to, to keep my herb, my herb garden going, but I do grow my own herbs, and I even have a garden uh, when the months, you know, are adequate. So I'll start planning for that. So you want to just peel some fresh some fresh thyme and put in there. Start mixing that up. Now, the next ingredient that I'm going to show you is texturized vegetable protein. Now, this product is soy-based, so if you're sensitive to soy, don't use it. Just use the jackfruit. I am not sensitive to soy. I have not developed a sensitivity to soil. It comes in, uh, you have to hydrate it. So this has been soaking in some water, just regular water, for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to pour this water off and um, add this to the bowl. I'm going to show you the package this comes in. I get this at my local international food market. This brand happens to be called Finest Brand and this is uh, light soy chunks and I love it because 
Uh, a half a cup is about 110 calories. Total fat is a gram. Total carbs, 10 grams or 4%. And protein, mostly I love it because, again, I eat, it's 16 grams of protein. And so because I'm not always going to have pescatarian, I'm mostly eating vegan and vegetarian. And again, today I'm making salmon. I haven't had salmon or fish product in several months. So this is uh, just uh, not always the case. So anyway, I'm gonna mix this up. I added that texturized vegetable protein. So when you go to uh, stores um, or chains, I don't wanna name anyone because I don't wanna sort of act like I'm telling you their recipes, but often the product that you're eating is made with this texturized uh, vegetable protein. It's kind of, kind of spongy and it actually is quite chewy. Uh, it has a chewy texture, really lovely chewy texture once you cook it and you can even um, use it. People make burgers and all kinds of stuff. You can flavor it. It has a neutral flavor, so it'll absorb the seasonings that you add to it. So I'm mixing this up and I'm gonna add a little, let me wash my hands. I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning because I added that uh, texturized vegetable protein to the mix. Let me add a little more seasoning. Now, in terms of quantities, you know how you say, or at least I say, well, I'm gonna just shake it up in there until the ancestors tell me to stop. If you don't, if you don't have that philosophy, you want to measure. But I have quite a good sized bowl here. I am making a lot. I can also, once I cook this, I can freeze this so I can have this meal at another time. I don't have to eat it all in one week. So I'm just gonna add a little more. That's probably a teaspoon. Um, my favorite, spicy chili peppers. If you don't like it spicy, again, barbecue jackfruit with texturized vegetable protein, leave this out, don't, don't fret about it. Chili powder, okay, about a half a teaspoon of that, and then some garlic powder. And again, I already added seasonings, but I'm adding a little more. Love that garlic, the layers, about a teaspoon of garlic, some paprika, paprika, about a half a teaspoon. And then I don't put a lot of salt in my food. I let the seasonings, but I am gonna add about a quarter teaspoon. Now I already added some salt earlier, so this is just to help out with the texturized vegetable protein. And, this, and then just some regular pepper, maybe about a quarter teaspoon. Boom tick, boom tick, boom tick. So mix this up, get this baby going, get this baby going, I get this baby going. Ah. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. It's lovely and spicy. Um, I don't believe in boring food. That's one of the other ways that I feel positive that I was able to maintain my 40 pound weight release because I just don't believe in boring food, okay? But I also realized that I was really addicted to salt and addicted to super sweet stuff. So that's why I'm layering in all these other seasonings to help out with that so I don't have to keep that relationship with the salt going. Uh, let me get this sauce off of this stove. So earlier, I whipped up this homemade barbecue sauce. Homemade barbecue sauce is so easy to make, y'all. It's ketchup, ketchup, brown sugar, vinegar, um, honey, uh, what else, what else I'm missing? Um, I'm missing something, yeah, ketchup, brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, uh, Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and a little lemon juice, and then I add some seasonings in there. I'm always gonna put some cayenne or something spicy again. So this sauce is gonna be poured over the top of this jackfruit, and then we're gonna let it all kick that, cook down. All right, let's get our eye going back up here, intense. And then as an added little twist, I love to add some pineapple to my uh, barbecue pulled pork jackfruit style, jackfruit with the texturized. It just adds up, again, sweet in the heat. It's such a great, 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 great flavor profile. And this is just a, some canned pineapple. If you got some fresh pineapple, absolutely. I would prefer that, I don't. It's cold here as well, so I just got some canned pineapple. I'm not gonna use all of this. Um, I'll probably use about a half a cup of this, okay? So, I just turned up the heat over here to get this. I thought I had it up high, y'all, but I evidently did not. 
So while I wait for that onion, green pepper, uh, green pepper, onion, and uh, red, yellow, green pepper, and onion to get going, I'm just going to tell y'all about my mom. My mother was an outstanding cook. She influenced me. She influenced me and my brother primarily. My mom cooked what I call adventurous cooking. I mean, we were we were relatively we were relatively poor. Let me just go ahead on and say it. Um, in fact, I lived in 13 different homes from the time I was born until I was 17, and we were not in the army. And basically, almost all of those homes were apartments. So you know, we had a difficult and challenging upbringing, or I'll say I did. However, my mom loved us. And she always showed us the world through food. I mean, when I look back on some of the dishes my mom was making us, we, we, I grew up in um, our very first, uh, we lived in the projects, what they called them back then. And the nickname of the projects was Little Vietnam. It's pretty rough, pretty rough place. But um, when I look back and think about some of the dishes she was making us, it really had an influence on me to embrace lots of different kinds of food and definitely lots of different kinds of flavors and uh, i just owe it to her she also influenced me to become an interior designer uh creativity i think was just in her v in her blood and her dna and she could take you know our little humble apartments and she would get furniture and pieces and artwork from wherever she could and pull that baby together and make it look absolutely outstanding. So I really owe what I'm doing now as a nod. She, she's transitioned, she passed away. Um, gosh, been too long, it's been too long, uh, 2006. So she would be so happy to see me doing everything that I'm doing today. And uh, if you're interested in looking at and finding out more about my, uh, my uh, journey as an interior designer, I have a video up on my channel called uh, My Afro Boho Design Journey because I love Afro Boho. And you can check that out. And I do a little shout out to her and my aunt who was an artist. I also designed this kitchen. I have a small kitchen, as you can see. I uh, bought and owned a 1925 bungalow. The kitchen is a small footprint. So I redid the entire kitchen, all new appliances, new counters. Um, I did all the painting actually myself because I do love to paint. So definitely check that out. Let me let me just step over here and check out this. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It is cooking up. Y'all hear that? I don't know, can y'all hear that sizzle? Well, it's going. Woo, it smells good. And her. Okay. Let me let this cook up for just another minute. So while that's getting going, I'm going to work on this black bean salsa. The ingredients for the black bean, black bean salsa, black bean salad. The ingredients, one can of kernel corn, not cream corn, just kernel corn. Two cans of black beans. These happen to be Goya. You can get any kind of black bean you want. Uh, rinse the beans off as much as possible but you don't have to take all of the bean juice out. You just don't want the whole can because you don't want it to be soupy, soupy soppy, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna add to this some chopped quartered um, cherry tomatoes. Uh, I had these left over from when I did my salad bags. I always do salad bags because I love to have a salad as a base and um and so these were left over the salad so i'm just going to quarter these pop them in here i don't know why i put them in the bowl first well I'm thinking well I'm thinking all right if you don't like black beans you can use a different bean you don't have you can make it a kidney bean salad you really and you could even cook your beans like overnight you don't have to use a canned bean for a salad like this I'm gonna use a canned bean. If I'm gonna make a pot of beans, I'm gonna soak my beans overnight and I'm going to make, uh, you know, my beans. My, what beans do you love? Y'all, I love beans. I really, really do. I really enjoy beans. And I like a whole wide variety. I love, I like a bean that a lot of people don't like, which is lima beans, but mm, 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 honey, you cook them beans up, 
get you some cornbread, some gluten-free cornbread on the side. Now, if you're not gluten-free, make your cornbread the regular way or whatever. But I love beans, and I love to slow cook them. I actually have a slow cooker, but I'll tell you the truth. My favorite dish is a dish that my grandmother sent me. Uh, as I said, I'm on the East Coast. And um, when I moved from Nebraska, which is where I grew up, my grandmother sent me some pots. And I have a Dutch oven. My grandmother sent me, ooh, honey, that pot makes the best beans on the planet. All right? So I'm going to add to, I just tossed my uh, cherry tomatoes in there. I'm going to, you got to have one of these, y'all. You also have to have a food processor because it just makes a big difference. Okay, those onions are going. I'm going to grate, just sit this in here. I'm going to grate some carrots in here. Remember, no boring food. Everything delicious, yummy, nourishing. I call a food a party in your mouth. It should be a party in your mouth, y'all. Make it a party in your mouth. You get so much texture satisfaction and um, taste satisfaction when you take the time to put some energy in your food. And I love it. Put my own energy in my food. So I'm grating two medium-sized, maybe large carrots. We after that party in your mouth, y'all. Oh, I forgot one ingredient that's in the refrigerator. Let me get it. Hold up, hold up. Let me get it. Refrigerator isn't far. Remember, I said this is a small kitchen. Okay, these onions smell like they're ready to rock. All right. Let me add just a little bit more olive oil and turn this heat down now that these onions are cooking up. Okay, we're going to turn that down to low. Yes, honey, yes. Oh, I wish everybody could be right here in this room. Okay, then just put the whole mixture, use your spatula, and get all of that goodness in there. I'm going to add just a touch of water, just a touch, get all those seasonings out of there. And mix, mix those onions into, can y'all hear that? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that's a good sound. Now, the only thing about cooking with spice is once you get that heat gets on those spices, it gets in your nose. Sometimes I'm sniffing in my videos. I'm like, oh, I hope the people don't think I'm not doing nothing. But it's those spices activating y'all. So I'm just going to mix this around. And then I'm going to put my lid on top and let this go for just a bit. That will give us time. Let me walk this over here so y'all can see it, how it looks in the pan. Oh, yeah, y'all. Now, we're going to add the barbecue sauce. Remember, I showed you that a bit ago. We're going to low, low. We're going to pour, oh, that seasoning. We're going to pour the barbecue sauce over the top of this. This going to cook for about 15 minutes. Let me get my lid. Oh, y'all don't mind that. Everybody say... I just grabbed my lids and they fell. Now, I added those shredded carrots here to this black bean salad. So we've got already a pretty party going on for this salad, okay? Um, next up, we're gonna add some green onion, chopped green onion, and some Cilantro. Cilantro is one of my most favor favorite fresh herbs. Herbs. Yes. Fresh herbs. So we're just going to take, uh, I think I'll just use two. Take your green onion. I actually green seeds yesterday, but I'm going to do it again. And I like to cut the, the little tip off at the bottom, you know, where the roots are. Add them to your compost pile. And then you're just going to chop them, a nice rough chop, this way first. Get all that good yumminess and all that flavor. And 
add this to the bowl. Do you eat salads often? Again, I love a good salad and I love variety. Remember, party in your mouth. If it's not hitting that party in your mouth level, I really don't want it. Um, I used to be in different meal prep groups, y'all, but honestly, I got out of them because, on Facebook, I mean on Facebook, because the food was just always too boring and it looked too uh, restricted to me. It looked like, oh my God, I can't have nothing good or I can't have nothing that looks pretty or looks yummy. You know what I mean? So I just figure, hey, I'll just go it on my own. Go, go it alone. Um, I am in a group now that I really dig. And um, so that's, that's, that's a nice, a nice change. So chop that up, add that to your salad, get your, uh, your cilantro. Get you a nice hunk. And again, I already washed this cilantro. Get that chopped up. Finally, we want this a little finer chop than the, um, a little finer chop than the uh, spring onion. So, another uh, kitchen utensil is a cutting board. Uh, this one here is one of those micro, anti-micro, you know how to say that word, micro thingy, microbiotic, <laughs> um, so that it stays clean, and you could have wood if you had that before. In my other house that I had before this one, I had a butcher block countertop. Woo, honey, I love those countertops because they were wonderful to cook on and make a meal. So I added the beautiful greenery now. We got our spring onions and our cilantro in there. I'm really just using the best utensil is your finger to smush and to smush, to uh, stir that around, boom. And then we're gonna add uh, some season, seasonings. Let me make sure for my rasta pie. All right, I wanna add some lime. I used half of this lime on my jerk jackfruit. Got a lime here. I'm gonna use this bigger one because I want it to have a good zest flavor. You just, a little hack to get juice out is to stick a fork all the way around the fruit, whatever it is, a lime, a lemon, an orange. And then poke it in the fruit and then twist it and go all the way around so you get all the juice goodness out. All right, yes. Then I, then I like to take my fork and scrape it across the front of that baby and get the rest of it, y'all, y'all, y'all. In a video the other day, I was asking people, uh, do y'all say sing and say songs while you're cooking? Because <laughs> I do. I do. I truly do. And I, you know, I'm always saying boom or yabba dabba boom, y'all. I just make up little quirky stuff. Party in your mouth, party in your life, right? Why not? Mix that around, that lime juice in there. And then we're going to add some a little chili powder and some cumin and I'm going to add a little salt and just a touch of vinegar. This is just white vinegar and oh, I'm actually low on my white vinegar here but hopefully I have a tablespoon here. Oh yes, tablespoon of white vinegar, little touch of salt, just about quarter quarter teaspoon. Yeah, yeah, about a quarter teaspoon. If you want more salt, be my guest. Absolutely add more salt. But remember, I said I'm not going to be creating that addiction to salt over again that I had before. Half a teaspoon of chili powder. Sprinkle that in. Half a teaspoon of cumin. So you see, see the uh, jackfruit, they have a similar flavor profile, but yet even though I'm using some of the similar seasonings, it's going to taste different because of the ingredients for uh, the salad and also the texture of the beans and the flavor of the beans is gonna change it slightly. And I need a little extra virgin olive oil. This is about, about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And then we're going to 
mix this in really well. Actually, I want to use my spatula. And I also want to add my onions, about a half a cup of, and these were chopped earlier. Let me take some of these bigger pieces out. I love to pre-chop. I did a little um, onion cutting hack video. It's a short. It's a short. It's not a whole video. So look under my shorts and a way to cut these so that you don't end up with a whole bunch of like stinging eyes, crying eyes, and a whole lot. If you want more onion, add more onion. If you want a little more cilantro, you want more spring onion, add more of that as well. That's the beauty of making something like this because then you can just customize it for yourself. All right. I'm just going to put, put this in here just for the sake of showing you all the finished salad. And of course, then I'm going to separate this into, you know, you can get those separate containers that you can get. Um, let's see if I have one over her. Oh, here's one. You can get, you can divide your meals. You know, this is a half a cup size, but you can get, um, you can get a cup size one. And then for your meal prep, you can divide them up and make them ahead of time. Black bean salad, party in your mouth, yeah, yeah, a party in your mouth, yeah, yeah. Listen, this is going to be so good. It's not time to eat, but I'm going to just have a little taste, just a little corner right now. Just to... Oh, my God. Woo! Oh, <laughs> straight up. Now, see, sometimes I get in trouble when I do the taste test because it's like, oh, I just need to go ahead and have some right now. But it is spectacular. Lots of zing and lots of just marvelous flavors playing well together. Oh, my God. See, when I make food like this, it makes me go, oh, I can't wait till I have that next week. So I'm going to be, let's see, oh, I'm having this with my dinner. So my salmon, my jerk salmon is going to be my lunch. This salad, I actually made a meal prep. You guys go watch that. video. It's a short it's a short video, less than a minute, and I have the whole meal for the week laid out. So you could make this. All right, y'all, this is done, 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 done. So, ooh, as you can see, all, let me just put some water in here. All of this does not take a long time to make. Um, you can make awesome food with just a, just a little bit of prep in no time at all. All right. So I have a cup of the pineapple. I'm gonna add this to the jackfruit. Let me see how that's doing over there. Oh yes, yes. I'm gonna try to heat up just a little bit. Yes, very nice, very, very nice. Oh my God, I really wish y'all could smell it. Ah, yes. Okay, so I'm adding the pineapple. Okay, this addition is, you know, my my recipe, my take on things. And again, going back to my philosophy of let's have a party in our mouth. We we don't have to have boring food. We just do not. So I'm gonna let this go for about mm, 10 minutes. Let me clean up a little bit over here. I got a lot going on. I'm gonna let that go for 10 minutes. And then we're going to pour that homemade barbecue sauce that I made earlier over the top. Um, I believe in composting. I, again, I have a garden in the uh, spring and summer. And so I always compost. So when I'm cooking, I always have something. This is a paper plate that was left over from my son. And so when I'm cutting stuff or, you know, get to the end of a raw vegetable or whatever, even shaving garlic, I put it in my little compost situation, and then I take it out to the composter in um, in my backyard. Helps with the environment. Every bit helps, y'all. Okay, now, what's next? What's next? We did the black bean salad, the jerk, jackfruit, and texturized vegetable texturized protein is cooking over there. Woo, it smells good up in this joint, y'all. Next up, what should I... Mm, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the vegan uh, chocolate mousse. Okay, so to do that, I already have a half a cup of 
chocolate chips and some water in a glass bowl. And this is how you melt your chocolate. You're going to turn this on and let the steam cook the chocolate down. So let me get that going. And let me get my, yes. So vegan chocolate mousse. What the heck is vegan chocolate mousse, right? Right, right, right? Well, let me get this all set up. Let me put my, put my garlic here, my lime. Anybody else do this? You have your little jar and you have your garlic, your ginger. I even, yep, there I go. I even have some Thai, because you know I said I love spicy. I got my Thai chili peppers dry down here. So they're right there quickly. I can access them with no problem. All right, so vegan chocolate mousse. Now, vegan means you eat no animal products, right? So that would mean that you would not eat eggs. And so if we're not going to use eggs, what are we going to use? Well, I got the answer for you. We're going to use the juice from chickpeas. The lovely thing about the juice from chickpeas is you can even freeze it. So, I made, uh, two weeks ago, I made a absolutely delicious uh, chickpea mock tuna salad. And so the juice, instead of throwing the juice away, you know how you... If you eat, have eaten chickpeas out of the can and you rinse it and you're like, oh, all that foam is coming up. Oh, oh I want to get that off. Well, you just threw away liquid gold, y'all. So you, I poured the juice off of those uh, cans of chickpeas that I uh, made the mock tuna salad with. And then I just froze it because I knew that I could then make a lovely, luscious dessert. So for this recipe, you are going to take one and a half cups. And this is actually, the juice is called aquafaba. And you're going to take that and you're going to pour it in. I like to use this um, stainless steel bowl. You can use any bowl you want. Pour it in. Oh, there's a little piece of the... And it... Well, I'll show you at the end after I pour it all in here. Just pour it in here. You know what? Let me make sure because, see, I'm going to measure this. Perfect. That is That was one cup, okay? So I can show you better in this glass. So that's the aquafaba. Um, let me get a spoon here. It's a little, it's, it's not thick, but it's not thin either. Uh, it's super unique. It's just one of the most unique creations in the world in my book. So this last cup here should be a half a cup. And you need a blender. I have a hand mixer. You could, if you have a standing mixer, you could use that and make this dish. Um, yeah, I have my chocolate going over here. I don't wanna just forget about that. Hold on a second, let me see if I can mix this up. All right, it's, it's getting going, it's starting, to, it's starting to go. All right, got it up nice and high. So you're gonna use uh, one and a half cups of aquafaba, a half a cup of melted chocolate again. I have that getting going over there. A tablespoon of cocoa powder. I'm using cacao because I love cacao. It's uh, something that I have on hand almost all the time. I love to make um, drink like cocoa, cacao drink. In fact, I love it with no sweetener, but you could make cacao with like honey. And also you're going to do, do two to three, two to three tablespoons of cane sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. And really that's it. Now, I'm getting ready to turn the blender on. It's going to be loud, but it's necessary. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's, made, it's much quicker with the blender. So turn your volume down if you're like, oh, that's too loud. And I apologize in advance, but this is the way you make it. Vegan chocolate mousse. Oh, you know what? Uh, hold on before I get started with that. Let me get my little cups. Matter of fact, I'm going to use both of these. So I like to put the mousse in these, um, these glass little ramekins basically I guess that's what you say these are the ramekins that you put um, put stuff in I'm actually gonna use this large one and these are awesome what oh, smell good in here y'all what are some of your favorite make ahead dishes what are you making if you're just like 
wanting to, you don't need, maybe you don't even want to lose weight. You just want to love on yourself and make sure that you are filling up your body with, I always say, good food that nourishes your soul. What are you making? If you're really busy, you think, you know what? I don't want to do skinless chicken. What have you, uh, what have you realized is good for you to make? All right. Here we go, y'all. Drop it in the comments. I'd love to know. So, you probably can't hear me, but I'm going to try to speak loud. So, as you can see, hopefully you can see that foam already starting. Let's turn this off. Just that little bit. Let me see if I can get a better, sometimes the light. You can, there we go. So, it's already starting to whip up. Turn the volume down if it's too low, y'all. I hope y'all make this food. It's so, so, so good. So hold on, let me show you one more time and then let me check on this chocolate. The goal is you want to whip this. It's already increased by three times. Uh, you want to whip it up to stiff peaks. Let me check on two things. Let me check on the jackfruit. And let me check on the chocolate. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. It's time to add the barbecue sauce. All righty dighty. So, we're just going to grab a spatula here. I'm going to take this barbecue sauce that I already made earlier, pour it over the top. I'm going to bring this over and show it to y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It just doesn't have to take a long time, y'all. I'm telling you, making good food does not have to take forever. All right, let me bring this over and show y'all. Okay. So this is how our uh, barbecue uh, jerk jackfruit with some texturized vegetable protein. I just poured the homemade barbecue sauce. Don't that look good, y'all? Whoop! Truly, smell of vision should be in, should be invented. So we're gonna let this cook. Eh, that, because the barbecue sauce is already cooked, really I just want the sauce to start to sort of marinate into our meat-like uh, base, and it will be done. So I'm only gonna let this cook for about really five minutes and then we're just gonna let it sit. Okay, let me stir this in here. Put the lid back on. Talk about some good eats, y'all. Good eats for meal prep. Boom. Now our chocolate, I don't wanna, our chocolate has been sitting, oh yeah. See how that chocolate, yep, it's ready. It didn't take long. Now we have our chocolate ready. Let me turn the heat off over here. So when it's time for that, boom. I'm actually gonna put this right here, down here, boom. Up, block, zero. Okay, back to the blender. Here we go. So you're just getting this to stiff, stiff, stiff heat. Remember, if it's too loud, just turn your turn your volume down. We're almost done. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's coming together, y'all. Y'all, there we go. See how that—that's. I mean, this is already 
five times what it was the liquid that we started with. which is nice and melted. We're just going to take... Don't, don't fall, nothing. Don't fall. Everybody stay where you are. Everybody stay in your position. I'm always talking to things when I have a small kitchen and I have to put things, you know, where they go. I'm always saying, you know, you stay right there. Don't fall because, you know, I, I don't have a lot of counter space. Um, teaspoon of vanilla. This is a little bit more than a teaspoon full of vanilla. So I'm going to mix all the other ingredients into the chocolate. I might have to add just a touch of water to keep it loose. Two tablespoons of sugar. And I'm using coconut sugar, but you can use whatever sugar you want. You know, regular white sugar, whatever sugar makes you happy. And a tablespoon of cocoa powder. Again, I'm using cacao because I like cacao. But you use what you have on hand or what you love. I'm just going to add just a touch of water in here. Here's my whisk. Here we go. All right. I'll use this whisk or something else earlier. All right. So we're going to make sure you have everything good and luscious. Remember, no boring food. No boring food. Meal prep is not just uh, skinless chicken and, um, you know, I mean, I don't know why I keep picking on skinless chicken, but, you know, you just see that and you're like, okay, that's not really what I'm, really what I'm that's not what I'm after for my, you know, sustenance for life. Okay, whisk this around. Well, I should have used my long whisk, but anyway, whisk this around so because it'll start to tighten up after it comes off of the stove. So you want to make sure that you keep it whisked. And smooth. You gotta kind of work quick with this. So again, so that your chocolate stays uh, liquefied. If that's fine. We got it all ready to rock here. And then you're gonna fold it into into the um, into the aquafaba, the egg white like egg whites. Okay. So we got this all ready to go. We got our chocolate, ready to rock. Okay. And then we're gonna pour this in. And um, get all of it in there. Again, this is this is not a long, doesn't take long to make this, but you're gonna let it sit in the refrigerator. I'm going to fold it in. So it's starting to get chocolatey looking. Yep. Just keep whisking it around, folding that chocolate in. 
Fold it in. Fold it, fold it, fold it. Chocolate gumminess is starting to all mix together. Yep. Use your spatula. Keep stirring and folding it in. Make sure you get the bottom. And make sure it all gets worked together. Can you see that? Yes, y'all. Vegan chocolate mousse. When I say five minute dessert, sometimes on my videos, I'm not I'm not making that up. This one is probably more like a 10 minute dessert, but I mean it's 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 just marvelous. It's just marvelous, okay? So this don't overwork it. This is all mixed in and ready to go. You're gonna get your glass ramekins that you're gonna use. Come out of here. You're gonna pour your mousse mixture in. here my left whatever's left I'm gonna try to put in that last one boom I fill this one up hopefully I'll leave one more let me see if I have another small one oh, I do not okay so my other ones are all used up so I'm gonna use this plastic one although I would normally you know what I'm gonna get a bigger one get a bigger that's quite a bit. Mm. I like to use the glass because then I can just eat right out of it. I try not to eat out of plastic too often. So anyway, just a personal preference. So anyway, you pour everything, all that yummy goodness into your ramekins that you're going to use. And boom. Your vegan chocolate mousse is ready for the refrigerator. So you're going to set it up in the refrigerator. Turn this heat off here. I'm going to put it on a pan so I can slide it into the refrigerator to let it sit up overnight. Uh, and the great thing about these um, glass ramekins is they all have lids, so you can even mm -hmm. lid it off. It's a little lid coater. This has a lid. This lid goes here. Uh, this one goes here. I love these glass. I think I got these at Aldi's one year. I'm almost certain. Oh, that one doesn't go there. Where is the other one? Okay, this one goes here. And I love them because, again, they came with these cool, wonderful lids. If I can find a lid for that other one. Um, I know I need it somewhere. Well, I'll put it in the refrigerator for now, and I'll get that lid later. Because the last thing we have to make is the um, jerk salmon, and that literally takes uh, 10 minutes because that's just how salmon cooks. Hold on a second, y'all. Let me put this in this refrigerator. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Boom. Now, the, I turned the heat off on our jerk jackfruit. Um, and texturized vegetable protein is done. Move this over here. Let me bring this over so y'all can see it. All right. This is the beauty right here. This is a barbecued uh, jackfruit pulled pork with some texturized vegetable protein in there. I can't even explain how delicious this smells. This is straight up going to be a party in your mouth, okay? You can have this um, on a bun. You can have, I'm going to have this with a gluten-free pita pocket um, that I love. I get them from Costco. A lot of y'all know Costco is my one of my favorite three places to shop. But this makes a phenomenal make-ahead meal. And as I said earlier at the top of this video, you can freeze this. It freezes well. This is a lot. I'm going to freeze half of this, and I'm going to have this in another dish eh, in maybe two or three weeks. So that is done. Make-ahead meals do not have to take forever, okay? They do not. The last thing I'm going to make is the jerk salmon. And I said earlier at the top of this 
live video that I had made this awesome jerk marinade uh, yesterday morning. Totally quick to make. Somebody uh, on Twitter, I posted the picture, said, oh, that looks potent. And it is potent. It's potent and it's powerful and it's delicious. And it doesn't take forever to make stuff like this. Yeah, you can buy jerk stuff, you know, in a jar, but you can make your own super quick. Then you get to control the flavor profile, the ingredients that you love or you want more of in it. Yes, practice that kind of self-care love, y'all. Practice that. Love on yourself real, real good. So I actually slathered, because that's one of my cooking words, slathered the um, jerk marinade on this salmon, because these are salmon cut into chunks, slathered on there uh, yesterday, and I let it sit overnight so that I just could cook it up today. And we're going to make this quickly. I have a griddle here. This is one of those griddles that just sits on the top of your, of your stove, which is so convenient. If you don't have that, just use a flat pan. Let me get the, um, let me get this, Yep, let me get this going. So you want to heat your griddle up to um, about three, 370. You want it to be hot. And you want to um, put some olive oil or your oil. If you want avocado oil, coconut oil, whatever your oil is, vegetable oil. Um, you want to put that on the griddle. And you want to uh, let it heat up. All right? So I have one, two, three, four, five cut fillets here that I am going to cook as soon as that griddle heats up. And again, if you're just now joining me, I'm your girl, Denise Joy. I'm a multi-hyphenate eater. I'm an interior designer and I'm just an overall joy bringer. And when I say multi-hyphenate, I mean this. I eat vegetarian, occasionally pescatarian, vegan, and always gluten-free. Now, gluten-free, you really, I think most people think of that for like baking. I'm not a gluten-free baking specialist. I actually have two cookbooks that I absolutely adore. And a lot of times I'll modify a recipe. You know, you're probably the same. If you like to cook or you're wanting to learn how to cook for yourself, you realize that you might get a recipe and you're like, mm, I wish it had more of this or I wish it had more of this flavor or I wish it had whatever. And so you're a modifier. And so that's really what I am as well. And um, I enjoy being a multi-hyphenate eater. For... 20 or so years I was a strict vegetarian and that was the, being vegetarian before vegetarian was trendy and uh, I had a friend who used to always say that uh, I pretty much ate grass <laughs> but I did not just eat grass but back then I was more like I wasn't thinking about a party in your mouth not like I'm thinking now like my whole way of uh, designing food and creating food that's nourishing for my soul has totally transformed. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Are you multi-hyphenate? Are you vegan? Are you strict vegetarian? Are you transitioning to one, the other? What's your multi-hyphenate profile? Are you just a carnivore? Oh, listen, I used to be a carnivore. I went through, you know, the, the terms, I was a carnivore, I did keto hardcore. So for about, I think um, maybe nine months, I did eat a lot of red meat and I was keto. And my, I realized my body didn't like it, so I had to come back to what my body thrived at best. I believe you gotta eat, but well, you gotta learn your body. And then you need to eat and you need to um, practice what I call movement is preventive medicine. Movement is preventive. You gotta practice those things in a way that makes the most sense for you. Let me check on this griddle. You know how you check on the griddle, you put a little, put a little drips of water on there and see if it talks back to you? Oh yeah, it's talking back to me. So. Our yummy salmon slathered with the homemade jerk marinade. Now, if you're like, ooh, that's a lot. That's too much for me. Don't put that much. Put what will make you happy. Put, put what will make your senses think, ooh, that's sensational. Ooh, that's not just delicious. That's sensational. Ooh, that's marvelous. Like, you know, employ some words that we don't use as much as we should to as it relates to food. Ooh, that's marvelous. So I'm about to put this marvelous salmon on the hot griddle. You want to put it skin side down and let it cook. 
Ooh, child. Depending upon the thickness of the salmon, it could be three minutes, it could be five minutes, it might be seven minutes. You just have to keep an eye on it. All right, here we go. Ooh, y'all hear that sizzle? I hope y'all can hear that sizzle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do a little cleanup. Remember earlier, this is the black bean salad all ready to go. And on the day that I eat the salad, I'm also going to make a quick guacamole goddess dressing. Oh, I will share the recipes. Yes, I'm going to commit to doing this. I will share the recipes in the description under this, because this is on, going to be a video after this live is over, and I'll share the recipes. But on the day, the, the guacamole goddess dressing is super quick to make. One of the hacks for time saving that I use is to purchase the um, those minis, you know, those little mini gua. Let me show you. It's quicker to show you. It's quicker to show you. Purchase some of those mini guacamole cups, right? You can get them. I mean, one of my other stores that I love is Aldi's. Aldi sells a brand of these that I love, but these I happen to get from Costco, my other store, my three stores, Costco my internet, local international food market, and all these. That's, those are my stores. But this is quick, and then you can mix up your guacamole um, green goddess dressing with this. Um, you're gonna add a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of honey, um, mix this up, and it's just yummy. I'm gonna add a little spice, because you know, your girl loves spice. Let me check on this salmon, hold up. Oh yeah, oh it's doing great. Yes, let me look at my time. Okay, we're gonna go here, just making sure everything's not sticking. If this griddle wasn't so heavy, I would drag it over here to show it to y'all. I might just do that in just a minute before I flip it. But I'm gonna make that dressing to go with this uh, salad. And that way I can make that dressing um, maybe every two days because I also like to eat some of the same foods every day because they're so freaking delicious. I mean, straight up. That's just no two ways about it. Y'all just now joined in. I believe in making food that nourishes your soul and it needs to be a party in your mouth. It cannot be boring. No boring food. Um, these are just some of the ways that I have been able to maintain my 40 pound weight release over the past two years, keeping these good habits Keeping these ways of, of thinking and being going have been um, just the best for me. And I hope that you are giving something of value. If you got something good, you want a recipe, drop it in the comments and let me know. I'm happy to support you, y'all. I really, really am. Um, let me see. Again, I think we're almost ready to flip this salmon. This salmon was not very uh, thick. So... Let me move this out of the way. Because we're almost done, y'all. This is we, We're at the end. Can you believe it? All of this good food prepared so quickly. Let me flip this salmon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Again, it's spicy, so uh, makes me cough or makes my nose run, but everything is worth it. Let me get my chocolate mousse, one of them, so I can show that one to y'all. This is our finished, partly finished. We're just waiting on the salmon to get done over there. Uh, what? I'll put it here. I'll put it on here. On the other side, we're going to let that salmon go about three minutes. Um, you might like your salmon a little bit more on the rare side. You might like it. You don't want it well done because then it'll be just tough. Uh, but just, you know, I love sushi, so I eat raw fish, you know, on occasion. Again, uh, sometimes pescatarian, multi-hyphenate eater, vegetarian, pescatarian, vegan, and always gluten-free. Um, so just keep an eye on it and see what it looks like for you. I am not going to overcook this. Oh, yeah. Okay, we probably got about another two minutes. Um, if you have a question, 
drop it in the comments. I am happy. If I don't know the answer, you know, I'm also a researcher. I might just drop a link and research the thing and help you out. I know what it feels like to say, to be a woman over 50. Yes, a woman over 50 and, be, and feel like, what happened to my metabolism? What happened to my body? Like, what's up? And, you know, feel like I, I, I don't know what to do. But when I sat with myself, I thought, girl, you tripping. You know what to do. Listen to your body. Go within. Pay attention. Um, I even did a little bit of food journaling just so I could start to see, okay, I think that and that and that, and that might be a problem all in the same day, several times in the same week, right? Why not invest and prioritize yourself above all else? Because you know what? You got this one life. You got to make yourself proud. Another one of my favorites is never hesitate to show yourself just how much you love yourself. Boom. In the last, you're the one you're waiting for. You. You are the one you've been waiting for. That's what I learned and told myself and realized it's me. It's really not anyone outside of me. All right, let's get this salmon off of here. Turn the heat down. Just that fast, y'all. Boom. Oh yeah. Now, this is going to, this salmon is going to, uh, the the meat that I put over my salad. I do my make ahead salad bags. This is my lunch. Then I can take this salmon and I can have it cold or I can warm it up, but I am gonna have it cold. I'm gonna chunk it up and sprinkle it over my salad and boom, this will be my lunch. And I also have, oh, I did forget one more thing. I made a, where is this? I need a, I made a creamy cottage cheese based salad dressing yesterday. Uh, I have a video, a short, I did a short, it's kind of a good picture. It's super delicious, it has dill in it. Uh, I had cottage cheese left over because I made a uh, zucchini, uh, vegetarian zucchini lasagna, no noodles, the zucchini is the noodles. And I used cottage cheese instead of ricotta cheese and I had some left, so I said, let me make a salad dressing. So this is going to be my salad dressing to have boom tick, meal prep done. In fact, I did this with all the talking. I had said at the top of the video, I probably could have made all this in one hour, but we're at an hour and 18 minutes, and I probably could have made all this food in really like 35, 40 minutes, to be honest. Meal prep does not have to take forever. It can be a party in your mouth. It can be absolutely yummy and delicious. Some prep, some forethought. I uh, plan my meals on Thursdays. I'm usually thinking about it. Sometimes I do two weeks at a time. I shop on Friday if I need anything that I don't have that's a staple. Then I do generally do a little bit of prep in Saturday morning because I like to work out. I like I bake my baked potatoes. And, and I made the, um, the jerk seasoning and I made the dressing all within maybe like 30, 40 minutes on Saturday morning. Um, I baked the potatoes while I worked out. After I finished working out, then I made the marinade and the, and the dressing. And then I cook Saturday morning. Usually I, I take, I span two hours, but I don't usually use all that time, y'all. You can do it. You can make awesome nourishing food that nourishes your soul. I am so glad y'all took some time to join me. If you're watching this video after the live goes off, drop your comments, drop your um, questions, shout out your favorite thing. Let me hold up. Uh, let me hold up one last time. This awesome, gorgeous jerk barbecue jerk barbecue jackfruit with some ve uh, texturized vegetable protein. You can have that on bread. This is oh, woo, honey, honey. This is our uh, vegan chocolate mousse. It's going to be dessert. I said going in the refrigerator. This is our black bean salad. Absolutely extraordinary. And then this is our 
jerk salmon that will go on top of my salad. Thanks for joining me, y'all. I will see y'all in the next video. Boom.